Okay. How's everyone doing? I'm in Grosvenor Square in London. Look who I've got with me. I've got Rog. And we're on our way to Bonham's Auction House because they have a Roger Moore auction that's going live in October. But they have some of the highlights on display. So I've got the Your Eyes Only shirt on from Frank Foster. I've permitted myself to wear the Benson and Clegg military tie. But we'll, uh, we'll see what's going on at the auction house and I'll check in with you soon. Okay. Hello. <laughs> so this, is, this is Joseph. Joseph, please introduce yourself. Hi there. My name's Joseph Robson. I'm one of the specialists here in the popular culture department at Bonhams. And we're, we're very much closely involved in the uh, Sir Roger Moore personal collection auction, which will be here at Bonhams New Bond Street on the 4th of October. But for this month, we've taken over the galleries for a, uh, kind of a preview exhibition of just some of the highlights, including some of his suits. Fantastic. Well, listen, Joseph, thanks so much for taking time to walk me through some of this collection. Hello. So, uh, this is Sasha, by the way. That's Sasha. <laughs> Sasha's been uh, helping me out on emails, and I called you first thing in the morning. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for you. sorting this out. That's Roger. <laughs> so, Sasha, I was just asking Joseph, what do you think are the, the main highlights, the headline acts for the collection here today? The suits, definitely. The suits, yeah. Yeah, two suits, uh, well, more than two suits, but we've got the octopusy suit and a view to a kill. Yep, there's uh, films represented, most of them are, especially by all three of his main tailors. So we've got Cyril Castle, mm -hmm. there's Roma, and there's Douglas Haywood. Um, so it's great to be able to offer um, suits, you know, from the films, from all three of his main tailors throughout his tenure as Bond. Great. Can we just have a quick word about this one to begin with as we're right close to it? Certainly. Sorry, Sasha, I'm sorry to be uh, <laughs> rude, but I'll catch up with you in a sec. Um, what can you tell us about, I mean, it's in such good condition. I think the first thing that I notice about this suit is just how well it's been kept. Yes, well, he would have, uh, he continued to use many of his uh, Bond suits after the films. I think there was an agreement between him and, and Eon where he could keep many of the, the suits after the film's production. Uh, and in some of the cases, the suits would have been worn for the, uh, the, the film's premiere, either in Los Angeles or in London. Um, so I need to check if it's this one in particular, but there are suits in the sale where he not only wore them in the film, but would have uh, then used them for the, that film's premiere. Right. And... Are these all handed down by the Roger Moore estate, Jeffrey and Deborah, his, his kids? So they were the custodians of this, and then they've given these guys, given the suits to you to yes. auction help? Yeah, this is, his, this is Sir Roger's personal collection. We're working directly with uh, Sir Roger's estate uh, to bring you know, his, his own collection of, of suits, posters, memorabilia, scripts right. um, from across his career, not least Bond, um, but all the way through, and including his charity work. Fantastic. Let's get over to the tuxedo over here, because I think this is, this is quite big because it's centerpiece for the actual exhibition itself. Absolutely. And let me get myself out of the picture and scroll away my mum's WhatsApp. <laughs> Sorry. So talk me through what we have here, please. Jeff. So this is the uh, Douglas Hayward uh, double-breasted uh, dinner suit, uh, which you probably recognise from the pre-title sequence of uh, A View to a Kill. So this is the scene with uh, Bond chasing May Day up the Eiffel Tower, back down again, and that uh, slightly chaotic car chase through the streets of Paris. Uh -huh. How are the... Um, I mean, it, again, this is incredible condition, isn't it? I mean, it, it, it looks brand new. And, you know, for suits that are, you know, knocking on 40... 40 years old, then in case that's this one. Uh, but they're all they're all dated on the inside. We've got um, Dougie Hayward's uh, label with the you know Moore's name, right. the, the job number, and and the date, which corresponds with the production period of of the films okay. themselves. Oh well, that's really that's amazing that he held <laughs> on to that, isn't it? It's a great resource, honestly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fantastic that he's you know Rogers kept them in in such good condition uh, over the years. Um, you know, showing the same kind of um, respect and excitement that that us fans do. So are these screen-worn as well, or do you know how many duplicates were made of these particular suits? Um, we can't say if it's a, a one-off, if it's the only one, um, mm -hmm. but it, it was made for the production, uh, made for Sir Roger as James Bond, uh, and kept by him after the film. Um, so w w where it may not be possible to do you know, forensic screen matching, mm -hmm. that exact still, or that exact moment, um, this, is, this is the suit from... 
uh, a view to a kill and it's sir rogers fantastic and what about the shirts and the the bow ties and the actual ties themselves are they also screen worn or are they fortunately not no. um so the, the the shirts are for the exhibition but okay. uh, that we are offering some of sir rogers ties and bow ties Ooh, uh, i'm well, excited by that which yes I, we may have a couple on display i can show you but there are quite a quite a number uh on offer uh, for various makers uh but unfortunately for this one um you know we've i've had to do the bow tie myself yeah no sure. well done good good effort mate good effort uh well, look, it's not just... Can I just touch upon the one other Certainly costume that we have over here? Because... I appreciate there's some license taken that that wasn't what he was wearing uh, <laughs> well, when he was first seen, but... So this, this is the, the Chesterfield coat that he arrives in New York in. And this is kind of like the holy grail, because I believe this went into private hands before it turned up to an auction somewhere else. Um, but maybe you can walk me through the, the provenance of this, if you know anything mm. about it. No, again, it may have been the case that um, you know more than one example were produced for the film, uh -huh. either for various fittings or what have you. Uh, but for this one, so this is um, Cyril Castle's label on the inside. Um, and again, the, the dating of the, the label is to 1972 for the production period of uh, Live and Let Die. Uh, and yes, yeah, so this is the one that Roger kept, and it's been in his personal possession um, until he passed away and it's oh, okay. with the estate. So with all of the suits and memorabilia in this sale, um, they've all been acquired or, or kept. Right, okay. So they've been, in, they've been in the family since the film, basically. So these, For 50 years. Right, okay. Interesting, interesting. I'm just wondering how you can, like for, in terms of auction, how you can put an estimate on, thing, on costumes that might be one of, say, two, three or four. Do you factor that in at all when you have to do the estimates? Yes, it, it is a factor, um, and obviously provenance is, is a key thing, which I think is one of the uh, most exciting parts of this particular sale, is that everything is Sir Roger's own. Yes. Um, and, you know, if you're going to have a Bond suit uh, from the film, and it's from Bond himself, I think that's a, you know, that's a, a special factor that really resonates with people. I bet, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to touch on the ties. You said that there might be one or two ties around here? Yes. <laughs> um, so we can have a look here, although it's, uh, it's not related to the morning suit that this mannequin is wearing. This uh -huh. is from the, uh, um, it's the view to a kill when uh, Bond attends uh, Royal Ascot. Sure, the suit, um, yeah. So yeah, it's the not the same, suit. I think he wore a Macclesfield tie mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. the film itself, but this is a, uh, a separate tie which will be offered, um, but we've been able to do some um, image research and find images of uh, Sir Roger wearing uh, many of these ties either at premieres or, or charitable events where he's kind of publicly right, okay. uh, photographed. Do you mind me asking the label of the tie? Is it an Anderson and Shepherd? Uh, I would have to double check. Okay. That's a, that's a very good guess. I'll probably uh, leave links in the show notes. But the. Mm. So the, just to get it get it clear, these are like the highlights. There's how many items here in the exhibition? About 100, about 160 or so. Yes, the so there's this, we've got about a hundred lots here today, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. but this is just kind of the preview. Some of the highlights, there are some more Bond suits and jackets um, yet to be announced that we'd be very excited to tell you more about oh, very cool. closer to the sale. Will they um, come into the gallery here? Yes, everything will be exhibited the week before the auction, so oh, before cool. the 4th of October, here in Bond's New Bond Street, there will be all of the suits, all of the posters, his scripts, his memorabilia, and, and uh, it'll all be on, on display ahead of the auction. Amazing. And will it all be listed on the website as well so people can see it? You know, yes, the board, there'll yeah. be a full online catalogue and a limited print run, um, but everything will be able to scroll through and see multiple images of and, and the cataloguing that myself and my team have been working very hard on. Chelsea, I'm so happy. This is such a great exhibition. Please, you could join us. Mate, this is fantastic. Honestly, I'm made up. This is... Wow, this is incredible. It's just like the, you've walked into the archives. I mean, you've got some beautiful photos there, personal photos. Yes, this is the material from uh, when I worked for UNICEF. Um, yeah. So I know from the 90s onwards, that was very much a key part of his, of his, of his career. Fantastic. Is there anything in the collection that's yours? Just to finish, is that something a personal favourite of yours, if money was an option for you? I think for me, it's, it's no comment on how good of a skier I am, but the, the Bogner ski suit oh, yeah. um, in the corner, um, also from a view to a kill, from that pre-title sequence, mm -hmm. um, I think is, I don't think it could 
necessarily compare to the Spy Who Loves Me scene, but in, as skiing scenes go, it was fantastic. But these are his personal... Because mm, uh, he was, yeah, well. he was an avant skier, um, wasn't he? We've got photos of him using these castle skis. Mm. Um, but again, it shows that, you know, from the View to a Kill film, he, he kept and cherished the, the sportswear that he used on the film yeah. and would have continued to use it while skiing personally. Incredible, incredible. Um, just to finish... Joseph, um, I'm not sure if you're allowed to say so perhaps we can edit this out in sure. post, but I, on the website I think there was the Angela Romo um, tuxedo as well from A Spy Who Loved Me. Okay. Um, and also you had one listed as A View to a Kill, the tuxedo as well that, that we see there. Can we say whether they're both going to be in the auction? Yes, yeah, so anything yeah. that's kind of online already as, as a preview highlight, that's also some of the highlights. Uh, we're kind of gradually releasing more and more information as we, we build up to the sale. Um, so there are a few highlights, like you say, online. Uh -huh. uh, there's this kind of large preview exhibition here. And in the coming weeks, there'll be the full online catalogue uh, on bonhams.com, okay. which will have everything. Okay, great. Listen, Joseph, thanks so much for your time. Um, and good luck with the auction. I think it's going to be a huge success. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, mate. <laughs>